Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you about one of the topics that most confuses people who are new to Python, list comprehensions. So let's say, this is my favorite example, let's say that I have all the numbers from 0 through 9. So I'm going to say here numbers equals range from you know 0 through, we'll say 10, that's 0 through 9 then. And I want a list with all of these numbers squared. So the typical traditional way that I would want to do that is to say output equals an empty list. And I'd say for one number in numbers, output append one number times one number, the second power. And we look and we see output is indeed these numbers squared. Fantastic. But this is what we would say is not Pythonic. It's more Pythonic to use a list comprehension. And Python has this really regular, really easy to understand syntax, except with comprehensions. It just stops people in their tracks. So how can we create a comprehension? So I'm gonna rewrite that same thing as a comprehension. I'm gonna say one number times one number for one number in numbers. And the good news is it works. The bad news is that people are super confused by this. So what is going on here? The first line, and I, I love the fact that I can divide my comprehensions up into multiple lines, thanks to the fact that we have parentheses here, right? Square brackets for the list comprehension. But the fact that we're opening parentheses makes Python much, much, shall we say, less strict about the indentation. That's fantastic. So first of all, we are getting back a list. So a list comprehension creates a new list. Always, always, always creates a new list. And that new list is based on an existing uh, um, piece of data, right? So a existing data structure. Typically, it's going to be based on an iterable. So I say now, in square brackets, one number times one number, and this is the expression. Its result, you know, this will be, will be evaluated once per element, uh, or once per, let's say, iteration of the for loop. And the second line here is indeed that iteration. Right, this, we run this for loop, not for like the number four, this for loop once for each element in numbers. And then we assign, of course, the element to one number. So part of what confuses people is that the list comprehension feels backwards to them, that the for loop runs, that's the first thing that happens. And then each element of numbers is assigned to one number. And then we run this we get this expression and the result of that expression is what's put into the list. So if we have 10 elements in numbers, which we do, then we're gonna have 10 elements in the output list, which is what we get. That's fantastic, that's great. But that's just the start of what we can do because this expression can be any Python expression, any function call, any operator, any method call, any expression that you might want to put in there is okay. And notice that it's just the expression, right? We're not printing, we're not assigning. Whatever we get from this is put into the list in that element there of the output. Okay, but what if I only want the squares of the even numbers? Well, now I can say one number times one number for one number in numbers. But then I can add a third line. So once again, this first line is the expression. The second line is the iteration. And the third line is what I call the condition. That's where we can put it in if. And only if this condition is true, do we go back to the first line. So I can say if one number modulo two equals equals zero. I guess that went right. And that's gonna be our condition. And sure enough, now I only have the squares of the even numbers. So what's first happening is this iteration. Then for each element of numbers, we're assigning it to one number, and then we're gonna check in our condition. That's the second thing that happens. And only if the condition is true, do we actually get to the expression, which is then inserted into the output list. Now, the expression again can be as complex or as simple as you want. The iteration can be as complex or as simple as you want. And the condition can be as complex or as simple as you want. All of these things are true. And keeping them separate in this way, I think helps us to keep it, you know, keep it square in our heads. One other way of thinking about this is that the expression is sort of like select in SQL. And the iteration is sort of like from in SQL. And the condition is sort of like where in SQL. Now, if you know SQL, this really helps. If you don't know SQL, this does not help one whit. So you can ignore that. 
So let's see some more examples of comprehension to try to understand how we can work with it. So let's say um, I, I have a list of strings and want to sum or lists of strings which only contain digits and I want to sum them. So I can say s equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, split. So now let's do this. Let's say, yeah, we'll say my list is this. So my list is now a list of strings. Can I sum these, my list? No, I cannot, because sum is gonna give us an error message. But I can, I have a list of strings, I want a list of integers, and I can convert each string to an integer with int. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say here int of one uh, item for one item in my list. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm going to iterate over my list. For each element there, I'm going to run int, and that's going to give me back a list of integers. Well, can I use this list of integers? No, because it's gone away now. But I can say sum of this whole thing. And sure enough, now we've summed them together. That's fantastic. And this is one very common way to use a list comprehension. By the way, you don't need to indent it this way. I'm just doing that for readability. Okay, but what if, what if there are strings in my list that cannot be turned into integers, right? What if I say here, my list equals 10, 20, 30, hello, 40, 50, A, B, C, D, split. So now if I say int of one item, or one item in my list, and I try to sum all of that, it's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow up because when we're trying to run int on hello, it's gonna say you can't turn that into an integer. So this is where I can use my condition. I can say here, well, only if one item is digit. And so now in my comprehension, I once again have an expression, I once again have uh, an iteration, and I once again have a condition. And this condition is going to make sure that we're only actually going to ca call int on one item if it's intable, if it only contains digits. And sure enough, now it works just fine. It's 150 because it ignores hello and it ignores A, B, C, D. Now, of course, in my condition, I can call a function that I've written, right? It doesn't have to be a built-in method or function, not at all. One more example of where we might want to use this. Let's do it the other way around. Let's say that I have a list of integers, and I want to use str join on them. So if I say here, my list equals 10, 20, 30, and I say star dot join of my list, nope, can't do that. Can't do that because join expects to get a list of, or I should say an iterable of strings. So now I have a list of integers. I want a list of strings. I can convert each int to a string with str. So I can say now star join of stir of one item for one item in my list. This is going to return now a list of strings. Can join handle list of strings? Absolutely it can, and it works just great. So breaking down list comprehensions into condition, iteration, condition, both in our heads and in our code, I think helps to make it much, much clearer. And I hope that you will take the opportunity to try to use list comprehensions in more and more places in your Python coding. The more you do it, the more natural it feels, the less weird this whole reordering of what we're running seems. And you're going to see all sorts of opportunities to use it that are better than and different from what you would use a for loop for. I hope this was useful. I would love to hear from you in the comments here on Twitter. And uh, don't forget, you can always learn lots more about Python every week in my free weekly Better Developers newsletter. Comes out every Monday. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon right here.